NASCAR returns to Auto Club Speedway this weekend for the first time in two years, and it's still a two mile speedway. It was supposed to be a short track by now, right? How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Interesting start to this season. Started out west in LA for the clash, then traveled to the east coast, Daytona Beach, and then back to Southern California. Hope the teams are logging those miles. We're gonna talk all about Auto Club Speedway and why it hasn't yet been converted into a half mile short track in just a few moments. But first, this episode is sponsored by my friends at Black Rifle Coffee Company, proud supporters of Noah Gregson, the number nine JRM Xfinity Series team. Black Rifle Coffee is a veteran owned business proudly serving coffee to military veterans and first responders. On their website, blackriflecoffee.com, you can sign up for everything from single individual purchases or subscription services that deliver great coffee and great products directly to your door. And their four varieties of ready to drink espresso drinks are also available at most major convenience stores and select retailers across the country, including Bass Pro Shops. Visit their website down in the description below and help Black Rifle Coffee reach their goal of hiring 10,000 veterans. So Auto Club Speedway was supposed to be a short track by now. Spoiler alert, it's not. If you go to the track tomorrow or Sunday, if you watch on TV, you will see the familiar wide spread out speedway. We've all come to no, and in most cases love, drivers at least love it. Fan support for it has maybe dwindled in recent years, which was why the short track project was proposed. But now it's been nearly a year and a half since that initial proposal. The project has been delayed once, actually maybe twice already. And now it sounds like track president Dave Allen's unsure if the project will ever get done. He spoke to the media a couple weeks ago during the LA clash. You can see this tweet from Jeff Gluck. Auto Club Speedway president Dave Allen says he's optimistic the short track renovation project will move forward, but it's still being evaluated. Allen used the word if when discussing the short track transformation and said the 2023 race possibly will be on the two mile track. That was nearly three weeks ago today. He was on Sirius XM NASCAR radio and said that a timetable for the project has not been established. So it sounds very likely that 2023 will once again see a return to the two mile version of Auto Club and maybe 2024 and beyond as well. So the project, it's not, it's not dead, but it's delayed indefinitely. Why it's delayed, I mean, there's a number of factors. I'm sure the pandemic is one. Now they did announce this during the pandemic, but they didn't know then how long the pandemic would last, what kind of long-term effects the pandemic may have had. Nowadays they can cite inflation, increased material costs, supply chain issues, you name it. The same issues that have hurt many industries around the globe in recent months. In other words, if they still wanted to go forward with this project, they'd effectively have to start over, at least when it comes to budgeting and that side of the planning aspect. Look back at these blueprints. This was like the initial, not rendering, but these were the initial plans. You can see they were gonna keep part of the front stretch intact, like a curved front straightaway, but the tight, tight corners, I believe with some banking. So it was gonna be like Martinsville, but with banking, a half mile short track in Southern California. Remember Auto Club Speedway is in Fontana. That's like an hour or so east of Los Angeles. So it's, it's out of the way, well, relatively speaking. So it does have a lot of land. And I think by converting that to a short track, it would give NASCAR, who now owns the Speedway, the opportunity to sell some of that land or maybe develop different projects on that land, something similar to you know, one Daytona down at Daytona Beach. Who knows? Either way, this project is clearly on hold for the time being. What does it mean for the future of you know, more short tracks in NASCAR? Because NASCAR and many of those in the industry have continued to push for more short tracks, like give Speedway Motorsports, SMI, some credit. They've introduced actual plans and actually have some budgets and money behind them. For Nashville Fairground Speedway, and even North Wilkesboro Speedway. Now, North Wilkesboro may never get a Cup Series race. It sounds like they're eyeing maybe a truck race in the next couple of years. But Nashville Fairgrounds, I think Cup racing is certainly a part of the eventual plan. So the more short tracks movement is still chugging along, but this is a major and unfortunate hang up. You gotta wonder if the success, I think we can say, of the LA Clash, whether that hurt or helped Auto Club's short track future, like it proved that there's at least a decent audience in LA for short track racing, but it also kind of proved that NASCAR can come in and build a, a short track pretty much anywhere. They can bring in with their own safer barriers, add their own logos and stuff around the track. I mean, what's stopping NASCAR from bringing the Cup Series to already built short tracks in the South Southeast, Hickory, Bowman Gray, obviously. I think if cup cars could handle the tight confines of the Coliseum, they could race at Bowman Gray during the right time of year. Future exhibition races at real purpose-built historic short tracks, I think should be 
on the table for NASCAR, which is another reason they may be looking away from Auto Club Speedway and put that kind of on the back burner for the time being. I don't have a lot of nostalgia for Auto Club Speedway. It's had some great moments in its history, but I didn't grow up going to races there. I know once this change was announced almost a couple of years ago, some fans in the area were disappointed. They're gonna miss the big four and five wide action. But again, I'm not really nostalgic for that. So I was kind of cheering on the short track conversion. So it's a bit disappointing to hear that it's been you know, indefinitely delayed, but we'll see what comes of it this year, at least this weekend, it'll be a two mile auto club race. And, but we'll see next year, we'll probably race on the two mile version once again, maybe someday, maybe Sunday auto club speedway will become a half mile short track, but not anytime soon. I am excited for this weekend's race, especially with the all new car. I think auto club speedway is going to be an early stress test. We've seen a lot of different tests early on the clash, the Coliseum, those tight corners. That was a test. And I think it passed Daytona high bank pack racing, some big wrecks. I think it mostly passed aside from those couple wheel issues. Auto club speedway is fast. Tires are going to wear dramatically. So this is the next test for the next gen car. We saw simple flat tires, cripple race cars at Daytona. What might happen at a more worn out track like auto club this weekend that that's going to be a test. Now I'll get back to Auto Club a little bit here in just a moment, but I also want to talk about some other big news from the last day or so. The SRX, that's right, the Superstar Racing Experience set to premiere season two this summer on CBS. They finally began to announce some full-time drivers. They actually announced a lot. Some IndyCar drivers that many of us are familiar with, as well as several familiar veteran NASCAR names. I'll start with some of the IndyCar names they announced. Paul Tracy, Tony Kanaan, Elio Castroneves, Marco Andretti, they will return at least for some races. Many of them will be full-time. Ryan Hunter Ray, I believe, will be full time. Joseph Newgarden will at least race Nashville. So, some pretty big names from the world of IndyCar. From the world of NASCAR, the Rocket Man, Ryan Newman, will race full time. He'll do all six SRX races this summer. Greg Biffle will return this time full time, hopefully in the number 69. Michael Waltrip is back full time, and so is Bobby Labonte. But Ryan Newman, the big new addition, fresh off what may be the end of his NASCAR Cup Series career. Happy to see Ryan Newman continuing to compete. Another great great reason to watch the SRX this summer. I love what the SRX is doing. Short and sweet, six weeks straight, Saturday night, occupy kind of a, a lull, a gap in the NASCAR and IndyCar schedule, if you will. Bring a nationwide spotlight to some local short tracks that many fans haven't seen or haven't heard much about. I think it's a great thing. I think it's a great thing they're putting on. It is cool how they've sort of established now a NASCAR versus IndyCar kind of pairing. Because obviously I assume Tony Stewart's going to race again next year. He fits more than the NASCAR side of things, but he has his feet yeah, kind of in both. Ernie Francis Jr. is back as well. So uh, SRX season two looking fairly promising so far. Excited to see Newman on track in, in the 39. How about that? Now, lastly, I have to address this. This kind of both covers the SRX and Auto Club Speedway, but Sunday afternoon, my boy, Matt Kenseth makes his highly anticipated national television debut. That's right, this was announced like a week ago, but Matt Kenseth will be in the Fox booth Sunday for the, not the Auto Club 400, they have a different sponsor this year. For the cup race, it'll be Mike Joy, Clint Boyer, and Matt Kenseth leading the TV broadcasts. A lot of you guys have asked me what I think about this as obviously the resident huge Matt Kenseth fan on the internet. I love it. I, I'm going to have a blast watching this race, even if he's terrible. I'm just going to love hearing from Matt Kenseth for, you know, three hours straight, largely interrupted. Well, aside from when Boyer interrupts him naturally, but I'm a TV snob as well. I'm often on here critiquing and addressing my complaints with the Fox broadcast. So from that perspective, I, I don't have high expectations. I don't think Matt Kenseth is going to fit in great. He's kind of quiet, subdued. I don't think it's going to work tremendously. My prediction is that Matt Kenseth will largely feel left out. Like it'll be a lot of Mike Joy, Clint Boyer, Kenseth having to be sort of invited into the conversation. But I do think Matt Kenseth will have three or four lines during the race, a couple one-liners, a couple zingers here or there that fans will love and will remember forever. <laughs> That's my prediction. He's largely uninspiring, not that great, but he has a few great lines here in there. That's my prediction for Matt Kenseth in the booth. Even if he sucks, I know I'm going to enjoy it. And all seven or eight of us Matt Kenseth fans still out there are going to love it. I love it. I read a couple interviews he's done this week, one with the Milwaukee Journal, where he said his number one goal is to just not come off as a total dork. So I don't know. I think that about sums up Matt Kenseth. Another interview he did with The Athletic, and this I'm going to pivot a little bit. He talked about the possibility of doing some SRX races this year. I told you this kind of had something to do with SRX as well. Yeah, Matt Kenseth said he might have done SRX last year, but it, the schedule interfered with his personal schedule or whatever. But this year, sounds like he's leaving the door open to running maybe some SRX races. 
that's the case, I will be there in a heartbeat. I will buy my ticket now. No, I'm just kidding, I gotta take that fan hat off for just a moment. Yeah, Matt Kenseth might also join that stout SRX roster sometime this summer. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully that happens, hopefully it works out. I'd love to see Kenseth drive something. He mentioned doing some super late model racing. So for all you Matt Kenseth fans out there, he's still keeping fairly busy this year. He's also training for the Boston Marathon, of course. Racers don't stop racing, I suppose. But there you have it. That's all I wanted to talk about in today's episode, cover a couple different topics. Auto Club Speedway, will it ever become a short track? I don't know, leave a comment down below. Do you want it to become a short track? Do you think it will? You think that project's canceled? Leave your thoughts down below, that's all I've got. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. We talk NASCAR news, rumors, race recaps, predictions, and much, much more every single day here on Out of the Groove. And as always, a big thank you to my amazing Patreon supporters. I couldn't do this show without your support. I truly appreciate it. We'll be back this weekend after Sunday's 400 mile race, talking all things Auto Club. I hope Matt Kenseth uh, does well the booth. I hope everyone watching at home and in person has a fantastic time. Let's keep the positive momentum going to start this season. A lot of things to be excited about if you're a NASCAR fan right now. I'm looking forward to this weekend. I will see you all Sunday night. Have a good one.